Hi and welcome to the third installment or the third part of Inference for Regression on Chapter 27, one of our last chapters in our textbook for AP Stats. So let's move forward where we left off on Part 2. I believe we talked about all of these and then went on to our test statistics. So we've just finished in the end of um, Part 2 and our last video, we ended off in all of the conditions being met for our leaning tower of PISA problem. Here's our data here. Let's see if I can move forward to it right here, somewhere around here. I think I went too far in my, here it is. And our leaning tower of PISA problem and this is the information that we're given. And we just went over our parameter, our null hypothesis, our alternative hypothesis. We went through all of our conditions, and this is where we ended up. We are able to move on with our test statistic, which is a regression t-test. And sometimes it's called, as it says here, is a test for slope. So sometimes it's called a test for slope using a t-test, or what is used in our textbook is an inference for regression t-test, or simply regression t-test. All right, so here it is. T is the uh, value, and that is equal to B over uh, SE sub B. And in our problem, we're going to enter all that data Go ahead and do the test statistic using a calculator. We're going to give you, go and use the uh, test. So you're going to go to, let's grab my calculator here. You're going to go to test and cursor up to a linear regression t-test. When you do that and enter, um, your X list should be L1, your Y list should be L2, your frequency should be 1. This is a, uh, as you remember or recall, our uh, alternative hypothesis was not equal, so choose not equal. You want your, um, your equation to go into Y1, so to do that you go to VARS, cursor over to Y VARS, and equation, and I chose Y1, and then cursor down to calculate. And as you recall from classwork, there was a whole lot of data that's given. B and T being one of them, or two of them. The problem is, is we don't know what the standard error is in this problem. So we have to calculate it by hand. To do that, you take 9.3187 and divide it with 30.0686. We get... A value of 30.0, or excuse me, 0 0.3099. Now, we're going to use that value we just got to find out the sum of the residual square root, or the square root of the sum of the residuals. So, the number that we just got here, by taking this number divided by this number, there's our number here, there's your SE, there's T, there's B. So B divided by T is equal to SE sub B. So again, B divided by T is SE sub B. This SE sub B is over here, that's what this is. So to find out the sum of our residuals square rooted, you have S divided by SE sub B. And that gets us the sum of our residual square rooted, or the square root of our sum of our residual. As you see on the calculator, you also get a p-value. Don't forget, it's a two-sided p-value. So this is already multiplied by 2. Just don't forget to put the 2 in when you write down your answer. And our p-value Here's our test statistic here for our t. Here's our p-value, which is essentially 0. 
we are going to assume that our um, alpha is 0 0.05 when we're comparing for our p-value to see if we reject or fail to reject. And in this case, essentially 0 is definitely less than 0 0.05. In this problem, our degrees of freedom were 11. It's that 13 pieces of data minus 2. So the decision then is since the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis at that 5% significance level. Therefore, our conclusion is that there is enough evidence to conclude that there is a useful linear relationship between year and lean of leaning tower of Pisa. That's it. That's our test. So I could also go and ask you for an interval. Let's say that I have the same exact data, same exact thing, but now I want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the true slope of the regression line. So there's our formula. Again, substitute in. Now T star, you're going to have to be very careful. T star and T are different values. And a lot of people do, they get the problem wrong here because they put the T value in and not the T star. In the T star, you're going to need to go in and look it up in your calculator by going to um, second, let's see if I can find my list here, second stat, second bar, excuse me, second bars. And you want to go to your INVT. And then you're looking at the top half of your normal model. So you're going to be using the area in the top part, which is what is that, 0.975? And uh, this one doesn't have any other, this doesn't say anything about your confidence interval. So we're going to assume it's 5. So if you're only looking at the top half, remember 5 is both um, both ends or both tails. So if you're only looking at the top one, it's 2.5. So what you would type in the calculator for an INVT is 0.975 comma your degrees of freedom to get that T value. Or you can look it up on your chart under the degrees of freedom and cursor over to the number of set of data. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and would be, let's see, our degrees of freedom would be 11. So this is the reason why we have our T star value of 2.201. This comes from our B. This is what we calculated earlier. This is what we calculated earlier. Remember, we had. Um, S divided by the sum of our residual square rooted, and we got this value. So when we calculate this out, we get our interval here. Remember, there's two values there, a lower and an upper. All right, so once we get our answer then, now we have to, to go through and write our sentence of what this interval means. And again, it's similar to what we've written before. We just have to make sure we talk about what the slope is. Remember, this is a regression, so we need to make sure we talk about the slope. So, I am 95% confident the true mean change in lean per year is between our lower bound, 8.6366, and our upper bound, 10.001, tenths of a millimeter. Remember, I said that earlier. Got to be careful of our unit in excess at 2.9. Remember, we talked about that in part one per year based on this regression. So we need to make sure we say these words. You have to have something to talking about a slope. Don't forget your unit. And it has to be based on a regression. So please be careful with the vocab when you're, you're writing your answer for your interval. Okay. We ended off in this chapter talking about a lot of computer-generated information. And I wanted to go through which ones were which in, in this example. So 
this is an output from Minitab. Minitab is a program for statistics. And um, I wanted to go through where all of this data that you should know where it's located. So our A is our, our constant. This is our y-intercept. Our B is our slope. Now these things out in front sometimes are called y-intercept or just intercept. Sometimes it's actually pertaining to the problem of whatever the intercept's title is. Like it could be a fee, it could be something else. This right here is our, our variable, it's our um, explanatory variable. So whatever the problem's dealing with, sometimes it's labeled here. So there's our slope. So from these two, we can actually write down what our LSRL is. There's our y hat, and don't forget this is an estimate, so we have to make sure it's a y hat. And there's our a, and there's our b, there's a regular x. It's not hat, you don't write y hat x hat, you, you just leave it as x. There's our r squared, there's our s, our se sub b, our t value, our degrees of freedom, and our p value. And that's it. That is the conclusion of the notes for chapter 27, which is inference for regression.